We are living in an age often dubbed the era of the empowered consumer. See, today, the consumer has more information, more options than ever before, but here's the thing, they have expectations that are higher than ever before as well. And part of the reason for this is, we've seen new players come into marketplaces across every conceivable industry and simply make things easier. Make customers realize that some of the frustrations and irritations they've been putting up with for years and decades are no longer necessary. There is a better way, a way that doesn't involve friction and difficulty. I mean, look for instance at the example of, of hiring a taxi. For years, we didn't have an alternative to hiring taxis where you rang up and you ordered a taxi, you had no idea when it would arrive, you'd have no idea what the level of service would be like, you really didn't know how much it was gonna cost, and then suddenly Uber came along. And you could book on your phone using an app, you could watch the car as it approached, you knew exactly or roughly what the fare was going to be, and at the end of the journey, you could rate the driver based on the customer experience. Now up until Uber came along, none of us expected that. Now, the expectation is that that is the base. Everything above that is where we're now looking for you know, a customer experience to be brilliant and impressive. That's the base level. It's higher now than it was even two, three, four, five years ago. And it is exactly the same in every industry. Now, if you're gonna deliver a customer experience that delights, that stands out, that makes you remarkable in a flooded marketplace where there's a lot of other players, the question is, how do you create that customer experience that stands out and is extraordinary? And I wanna give you three questions to ask to address the points of friction that can impact on a customer or a client or a user experience more than any other. First question you need to ask yourself consistently is, from the customer's perspective, what is creating frustration? What is creating irritation? What is creating disappointment? All these questions are about getting into the customer's shoes and getting a sense of what things are like to deal with you as a business from the customer's perspective. And there's some powerful innovations that can come as a result of this first question. And a good example of this, in fact, is the, the pharmaceutical giant Novartis. Years ago, Novartis was doing some focus group research and they were asking people about one of their products, which was a, a gel for back pain. And one of the customers in the focus group was an elderly woman who said the challenge for her was applying the gel to her back because she said she lives alone and doesn't have the ability to reach where she needs to put the gel. And so she described what she had done over the years was she would smear the gel onto this shower screen in her bathroom then rub her back up against the shower screen in order to apply the gel. Now not only was this degrading, not only was there no dignity in this, the reality was it was a source of frustration and irritation for the customer. Now, when Novartis realized this and took this on board, they went back to the drawing board and redesigned their product with an applicator, which now meant you could put the gel exactly where you needed the gel to be without having to resort to a shower screen. Another helpful question to ask, by the way, as we're looking at the issue of frustration is, where are the, the areas where your customers right now uh, are finding their own hacks, their own ways of getting around the way your product is designed? Now, for instance, you often see that your customers are actually innovating in a way that you would never expect. They're improvising. And improvisations give significant clues to innovation. You look, for instance, to the example of one of the hotel chains I was working with recently who noticed that more and more of their customers were putting their room keys slid into the back of their phone cases so they didn't have to have the, the room key separate to their phone. And then they put the phone up against the door to unlock the door. And so they realized that people didn't want to have two separate things, the phone and their room keys, so they actually created an app which allowed people to use their phones to unlock the door to their room. Question is, what are the things causing frustration and how can you learn from the improvisations customers are coming up with? The second question you need to ask if you're going to address the things that can impact on a customer experience is, what's causing inefficiency? What are the things that are slowing stuff down within the organization and therefore impacting the customer journey or customer experience? And I was working with a law firm recently and one of the people there was sharing with me that over the years, the, the habit for that law firm was this, every email sent to a client had to be signed off by a partner before it could leave the firm. Now historically, that was about managing risk. The reality was in, the, in an age we're operating in now where people expect responses quickly, immediately even, that was slowing down the experience dramatically for clients and also adding cost. And the question was, is this still necessary as a step? Now, if you've got staff that you trust enough to be dealing with clients, can you not trust them enough to be sending information via email that is reliable and trustworthy? 
And for this law firm that to actually address that basic assumption, which for in many cases was driven by a desire for power by the partners of that law firm, but it was creating massive inefficiency and impacting the customer experience. The third question is this, what is creating complexity? Because the reality for many businesses is that we actually like complexity. Complexity keeps customers locked in because there's a sense that if it's too hard, they won't go to, go to a competitor because it's too difficult to unpick contracts and set things up again. Banks, insurance companies, they've made a lot of money out of complexity over the years. But it's so critical that if you're going to stay at the cutting edge, you address complexity because the complexity you're unwilling to address opens up an opportunity for a disruptor to enter the market and solve that problem for the customer. And while you might be enjoying complexity at the moment, complexity leaves you vulnerable. The key to staying relevant in the face of disruption, the key to ensuring the customer experience is brilliant, is make it simple to deal with you as a business. Simplicity is key. I was actually working with a bank recently and we're discussing this theme as a leadership team of how could they simplify the process for customers dealing with them. And one of the most genius ideas that came up was from the mortgage team. And one of the people in the mortgage team said, we, we've got enough information on the client already. If we know they want to apply for a mortgage, why don't we automatically populate the form to get pre-approval for the finance? We already know all the details. Why don't we give them a form that's got a whole lot of blank areas in that they have to fill out? Why not pre-populate it for the client? It takes us no effort at all, and it makes the journey and experience simpler for them. It's such a, a, a simple concept, and yet those sort of ideas, those sort of innovations that enhance the customer experience, that is what's required if you're going to stay at the cutting edge in the years to come.